1911. No British monarch would have been welcome in the Republic in the intervening years. This was the Queen trying to seal a peace a long time in the making, bowing her head to the Republicans killed by British forces in the fight for independence. She pays her respects to the, the leaders of 1916 uh, who were executed by her forces. That's huge. In Irish nationalism, Irish republicanism, um, I'm not sure you can get greater than that. With the benefit of historical hindsight, we can all see things which we would wish had been done differently, or not at all. It was an expression of regret, close to an apology, for the way things had been run in Northern Ireland, a world away from the tone of earlier trips. 1946 in Enniskillen, and the Royal Ulster Constabulary proudly show the young Princess Elizabeth how they raid illegal pachine stills. On her coronation year trip to Northern Ireland, the Queen was entertained by Lambeg drums. Then the drumming went on in the grounds of Government House. For Catholics, a sound they felt was intended to intimidate them. Thousands of loyal subjects were waiting to offer a rousing welcome to the royal pair. The commentary ignored the deep divisions, and the royal itinerary skirted round them too. And certainly Ulster's younger generation maintained a great tradition of enthusiastic loyalty to the crown. Opinion was divided as to the wisdom of a royal visit at such a time. In later years, as violence stirred, the coverage changed. Worries about the Queen's security meant fewer, shorter visits. It would be 11 years until another trip was risked. For her Silver Jubilee in 1977, the Queen was helicoptered in to avoid ambush. There she is, dressed in blue. Did look somewhat strained. Something perhaps of a reaction both to the threat and to the helicopter trip itself. She went to Coleraine University, 60 miles away from Belfast, but even here she was greeted by a bomb warning. The device exploded hours after she left. No one could remain unmoved by the violence and the grief that follows it. Graffiti in West Belfast went up just ahead of the visit, and while the Queen was fated by her loyal subjects, Republicans led a protest march. It was banned and soon turned into a three-hour riot. This is the ugly face of Ulster. This is the face the Queen did not see. The visit was seen in loyalist communities as proof the monarch was on their side. I just feel like crying. I think she was lovely. But the sad thing about it is that we would have loved to have seen her here in Belfast, just instead of sitting in her own homes. Their morale boost angered others. She became an icon of reconciliation, but in 1977, the Queen was not seen that way. As I said before the visit, I didn't think that it coming when it did, it could make any contribution to peace and reconciliation in Northern Ireland. It has not made a contribution to peace in Northern Ireland. Peace was still a long way off, and two years after this trip, the IRA killed the Queen's cousin, Lord Mountbatten. And Her Majesty the Queen, and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, arrive at the Great West Door. Lord Mountbatten's fishing boat was blown up by the IRA off the west coast of Ireland. And there, Earl Mountbatten's charger, the boots which he wore in June, reversed in her stirrups. When she resumed visits, it was with high security, day trips, no overnights. It was arranged with the highest security and the deepest secrecy. Here, looking down on the H blocks of Her Majesty's prison maze, housing hundreds of IRA and Loyalist prisoners. You're in there at that point, aren't you? Yes. And she's overhead, looking down. Well, I mean, that's something that wouldn't have surprised us. I mean, we, there's only so much we can expect. We don't expect the British monarchy to behave different. It epitomises, it supports, it stands up everything that the British state is doing. Through 23 of the most deadly years of the Troubles, there was only one trip. The Queen paid tribute to the Ulster Defence Regiment. It was nearly 100% Protestant by this time. Many Catholics were convinced some in its ranks were colluding with Loyalist paramilitaries. Yes, 
71.12%. With the Good Friday Agreement, the Queen's role would change. With peace, regular visits could now resume. But the Queen awarded the George Cross for bravery to the Royal Ulster Constabulary just as the RUC was replaced by a new police force. Some Protestants felt they were being bought off with visits from the Queen as bastions of the old Northern Ireland disappeared. Due in no small measure to the bravery and dedication over the years of the men and women of the Royal Ulster Constabulary, Northern Ireland is now a much more peaceful and stable place in which to live. It got to the extent where uh, as soon as uh, some betrayal occurred uh, at Westminster, people on the streets would be saying we can expect a, a visit from the royal family fairly soon. You know, it, it got uh, that frequent uh, that uh, the uh, government, you know, we've taken this away from them, let's reassure them by sending the Queen over to, to Northern Ireland. The Queen was delighted when the Good Friday Agreement was signed. Republicans boycotted her when she visited the power-sharing assembly. And when a state visit to Ireland was announced, Republicans said it shouldn't happen. Well, I don't think the Queen should come. You, I, I presume you're picking up the English Queen, as opposed to the Dutch or the, and the other Queen that's out there. Despite Sinn Féin opposition, the visit to the Republic went ahead. Nobody was sure it would go well. Strict security measures meant the Queen arrived to empty streets. The arrival in the centre of Dublin, the streets had been cleared. Uh, there were barriers everywhere. There was a small crowd, small crowd, in, uh, at least half of which was uh, protesting uh, the visit. The bowing of the head to Republican martyrs at the Memorial Garden was a moment of connection for some in Northern Ireland's Catholic community who'd felt the Queen belonged exclusively to the Protestants. It was um, a recognition. It was saying, I notice you. I know that there has been hurt um, and I want to reach out. It was a stark contrast with previous images from her reign, a figurehead revered by one community in Northern Ireland. What the Queen did was clearly, for me and for other unionists, rather disappointing in a way, but understood. And it did help to heal relations in Ireland. It was necessary. In politics, some unpleasant things are necessary. But painful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. She bowed her head. Did, did, did it tug at your heartstrings at all as a lifelong Republican? To be quite honest, not in the least. Not in the least. I see it as a British monarchy. It's a, the apex of the establishment. The Queen put on a show in Dublin to thank Ireland for its hospitality. As the Queen and the President went up onto the stage, there was, a, there was a, almost a roar. I mean, people stood, they clapped, uh, and uh, the Queen, who I think was quite touched by this, turned to the crowd and gave a sort of friendly wave. Uh, and, and it was like being at a, 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 a football match or something. There was a wave of sound across, across the stage. After the eerie silence of the streets, some real-time feedback for a visit packed with sensitive touches. The night before at the state banquet, the Queen had opened her speech in Irish, wowing the Irish president beside her. Argus <laughs> Sinn Féin boycotted that visit but a year later, Martin McGuinness was ready for a public handshake. The fact it was Martin as one of the leaders of the IRA from Bloody Sunday right through, um, I think that, that, that certainly was uh, uh, an, another big day. You had the best ringside seat for the most extraordinary moment. Yes, uh, I, I hope the, the, uh, the Duke forgave me afterwards because I was so much concentrating on that uh, uh, that uh, I didn't see that the Duke was coming behind uh, Her Majesty uh, to, to shake hands. So uh, it was an absorbing uh, occasion. Good. It went, went really well. It had been planned for months. 14 years had passed since the Good Friday Agreement. I, I'm still a Republican. Martin, how was it to meet the Queen? Very nice. I have to say she was very nice. And... Uh, I don't think that surprises people because mm -hmm. I think we all had a look at her 
whenever she came last year, when she came to Dublin, when she went to Cork, and uh, conducted herself in a way which I think, uh, you know, made people think about this woman. The nationalist mayor of Belfast escorts the Queen to a lunch in City Hall. She has and she did show leadership at key moments in terms of showing generosity. And I think that we should recognise that. But I just wish that maybe those acts of generosity had been shown more frequently and at an earlier stage, even though I recognise how difficult that would have been. The photo opportunities were getting more daring. Here, visiting the old Crumlin Road jail with Martin McGuinness and Peter Robinson. I was able to, to show her my cell, uh, and there's not too many prisoners who are going to be able to say that, I suspect. And was Martin McGuinness held in there as well? No, he was in... No. Uh, Martin McGuinness's view of the Queen softened. Not all Republicans felt the same. If she had been assassinated, does anything challenge you in your mind thinking, well, actually, she was quite useful at the end? It, it, it's as well she wasn't assassinated. Well, without being too, too cynical about this, had, her, had, had, Queen, had Elizabeth taken a heart attack, had she fallen under a bus, or had, had the IRA killed her? Charles would have been doing the job, or whoever would have, been, would have fallen into that position. It's the monarchy, it's not Elizabeth. Violence in one part of her realm cast a shadow over the whole kingdom for decades. The Queen relished the idea of reconciliation. Courtiers speak of her pushing to be involved if she could help the peace process. And through her 80s, late in her reign, she did just that. <laughs>